banks, FMCGs, and all big corporates are gearing up for digital transformation. Keep pace with the changing world and upscale with AdWatch. Learn all about data, data security, advanced analytics, technology and automation, financial and ESG reporting. With hands-on experience and practical knowledge to apply to your daily job tasks or businesses. Certification that counts. AdWatch. Okay, hello everyone. This is Ahmad Gamal. I'm the lead Python trainer at AdWatch with a focus on using Python for data analysis, automation, and productive modeling. Okay. Additionally, I'm a machine learning engineer at an IIT company, which is technology lead, language service provider, and communications. Perfect. I'm also associated with other global companies such as Udacity as a session lead for different programs like machine learning, deep, re deep learning, and all of stuff like related to uh, data science and machine learning. And today I will be answering some of your questions to help you uh, mainly understand the applications of Python and how we can use it uh, for data science and machine learning field uh, and the challenges involved. Perfect. Let's start, it, uh, let's start answering your questions. Uh, the first question, which tool is the most commonly used for advanced analytics and automation? Okay, I think there are a lot of uh, tools. Some of them don't need a lot of coding and programming background, uh, such as uh, Power BI and uh, Tableau. It's uh, uh, business analytics tools. You can use it for visualization and driving some insights. And also, uh, there are some other tools uh, that need some background or need programming and coding background such as i think the most two advanced or the most to used languages are python and r i think that's mainly the answer of what is the most commonly used uh, tools for advanced analytics and uh, automation that's it uh second question is why python okay it's a great question python is one of the languages that is that is with sync Witnessing uh, incredible growth and popularity uh, year by year. Perfect. Uh, Python language is incredibly easy to use and learn. It's like you are, you are writing English. So it's very, very near to the English. It's very easy to learn. It's very easy for new beginners and new com newcomers. Uh, I think now we can say that Python language is one of the most accessible programming languages available because it has its simplified syntax as it's not uh, complicated. Uh, also, we can mention that we can summarize this by saying it's easy to learn and use. Uh, it's mature and has it's mature and has supportive Python community. A lot of people are writing Python code and improving the community. Uh, uh, Python okay uh, availability of hundreds of Python libraries and frameworks for everything for web development, for machine learning, for data science, for data analysis for gaming, uh, for building mobile application, for building uh, computer application, desktop applications, all of that. Uh, also supports big data, machine learning, cloud computing, all of that. Uh, and the flexibility of Python language. I think uh, that's enough for answering this question. <laughs> the second question. How is Python used in the processing and anal an analyzing of big data? OK, it's a good question. OK, we can see that uh, Python support uh, high-level data structures uh, to simplify and accelerate the speed of data, data operation, data cleaning, data manipulation. Uh, it, it includes data structures like sets, like linked lists, tuples, dictionaries, all of that. Also, we can see that Python utilizes concepts such as uh, data frames, matrix operations, and other for scientific computing. If you know the package uh, like NumPy, bundles, uh, bundles, and all of that. Uh, and also, as we answered, why you are using Python, it's easy to learn, to read and use, scalable and flexible, uh, portable and extensible, uh, high compatibility, uh, data visualization, programming and platform scope, large community support. It, it has a lot of uh, advantages and it's very helpful in using and uh, processing, analyzing big data. It offers uh, uh, hundreds of it offers hundreds of packages and frameworks for uh, big data. Next question, please. What are some of the most popular Python libraries used for big data processing uh, and uh, analysis? 
Okay. Um, we can mention five or six of them. NumPy, uh, Pandas, uh, Bamboy, used for uh, computation. Pandas using for used for uh, data manipulation and data cleaning. Matplotlib mainly used for uh, visualization. Also, Seaborn, Bokeh, uh, all of that are used for uh, data visualization. Uh, also, if there are uh, Scrabby and Beautiful Soup, we can use both of them for uh, data scrubbing to get data from the internet. Uh, other packages for uh, machine learning, like such as TensorFlow, uh, Keras, uh, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, all of that are used for uh, machine learning, and a lot more packages. Okay, can you explain uh, the MapReduce concept and how Python is used to implement it in uh, in big data? Okay, I will answer this question and then we we can take a break or something. Okay, MapReduce is a software framework and program mod programming model mainly used for processing huge amounts of data. Perfect. Uh, MapReduce program work in two phases. The first phase is Map and the second phase is Reduce. Uh, map mainly tasks uh, deal with splitting the data and mapping of data into different resources, different computer uh, computational powers or different computers, and then reduce tasks, uh, shuffle and reduce the data. That's mainly the map reduce. Uh, and Python provides a, a huge number of libraries to work with uh, big data. Uh, you can use it uh, in terms of developing code and using Python for big data much faster than than any other programming languages. You can also use other languages like Java, Ruby, C++, all of that. Uh, as also an advantage of MapReduce, uh, uh, it's uh, parallel in nature. So it's very useful for performing large scale uh, data, data analysis uh, using multiple machines in the cluster. Okay, let me introduce uh, let me introduce uh, the programs we have at uh, Edwatch. Okay, uh, let me now introduce the uh, Bison learning programs available with Edwatch. Edwatch is right now offering two cohorts. Perfect. Uh, one uh, on Bison. Both of them are on Bison, which are virtual hands-on learning experience uh, with aid of revisioning through recorded lectures. All the lectures are recorded, so you can do a revision at any time. Uh, uh, the first program is data science uh, with Bison, which is cover, uh, which will cover data analysis, uh, com uh, complex calculations, uh, data manipulation, and visualization. And the, while the advanced machine learning course is about building uh, predictive modeling, building a machine learning model for classifications, for classification problems, for uh, regression problems, and so on. Uh, uh, both cohorts are modular programs designed to make even an encoder an experienced professional. Starting from the basic coding level, we are starting by using Python and learn Python, the syntax of Python and how we can code in Python, and leading to an expert level. Okay, so you can choose which level of, of, of expertise you desire. Uh, we have earlier trainer uh, from, we have earlier trained uh, finance, uh, accounts managers, data scientists, engineers, uh, people from business and marketing uh, side, ERSC professionals, uh, HR, all of that. So if you'd like to know more about it, do visit our website at the given link or write to us at our uh, given email address. Okay. Uh, now let's get back to the, now let's get back to the questions on Python. Okay, the second question is, the upcoming question is, how Python used for machine learning uh, in big data applications? Okay, it's a good question. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, Python provides a huge number of libraries to work on machine learning and big data. Uh, at first, we define the problem in a clear way. Then we get the data. Uh, then we import the data and read and do data validation and checking the, the, the data, the, the checking the data and trying the data, to, trying to make the data clean and uh, ready for doing analysis. Uh, once the data is ready for doing analysis, we start doing EDA. EDA is um, exploratory data analysis. In this phase, we are trying to understand 
is a problem more understand our data getting some insights from the data uh just understand the data and know what is the data about whether it's ready or or not do some visualizations to uh, get some insight that will be helpful for us for building the model and also it will be helpful for the business to understand the data more once uh, we finished eda we will start by build we will start build the machine learning model uh, then we will do some fine tuning to get the best model the best um, the best machine learning algorithm and the best weights for the problem uh, once we build the model we can just uh, test and deploy the model so we can check the impact of that machine learning model in the in the real life uh, applications and uh, and in real life scenario that's it let's move to the next question Okay, can you describe some of the challenges in process processing large data sets with Python and how they can be addressed? Okay, uh, it's a good question. As you know, the data is, 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 is growing uh, exponentially. So we have a lot, a lot of data every day. Uh, the main issues uh, when addressing uh, uh challenges in processing large data sets i have a lot of issues the first issue which is storage storage issue or storage problem when you have uh, large data sets it can quickly uh, fill up the storage capacity if you have if you have one terabyte you can fill it up in if you have just one single machine with a one terabyte uh, storage you can fill it up with the uh, with the data you have or the model you are working for you're working on so uh, making it necessary to store the data on multiple machines instead of uh, storing the data in one machine you have to store it in multiple machines or in a distributed file system like hdfs and all of that another problem is uh, memory uh, processing large data sets can be memory it's very memory intensive uh, making it very difficult to fit all the data entire data set into memory uh, i think now most of most of the programmers have memory RAM with 16 uh, gigabytes or uh, 32 mega gigabytes, uh, and you cannot fit all the data you have into the memory into your uh, RAM or into your memory in one time. So it's uh, uh, an issue. So, but a solution for this to try to process the data in chunks, in smaller chunks. Okay, but this will increase the I/O uh, operations. You have to do input-output, a lot of uh, input-output operations. Uh, other issues like compute, uh, com uh, analyzing a large data set can also be computationally uh, expensive, very expensive, uh, especially for complex uh, algorithms, which requires a lot of processing power and processing time. Uh, but we also can solve this by using distributed system and distributed computational power to have multiple uh, multiple computers, multiple PCs, and we can distribute the computation power into uh, com distribute the task into different computers. Uh, and all of that that's mainly the main challenges uh, when we are facing while while dealing or processing uh, large data sets. Okay. Let's move to the next question. Question: uh, Can you explain how Python, how, how sorry, how Python can be used for data visualization in big data projects? Okay, uh, data visualization can be done using any programming languages, any programming language, but choosing Python is better for visualizing data easily, as you can do a data visualization with a smaller lines of code if you're using Python. Okay, and as we said before, Python has uh, a very easy syntax, syntax, and it takes very less time to code things. Uh, also, Python provides different packages or libraries for data visualization using uh, the features that exist already in Python. Some Python libraries used for visualization, like uh, uh, Matplotlib, uh, Seaborn. Uh, uh, and many other packages, but I think the most known or the most the most known uh, one are Matplotlib uh, and Seaborn. Uh, also, there are Blotly. Blotly is very 
very good one it's mainly interactive instead of having static visualization it's an interactive dynamic uh, visualization so it's a very good one uh, also bouquet and the other uh, visualization uh, libraries let's move to the next question which is uh, last question last question for today uh, can you explain how Python how <laughs> again can you explain how Python is used for large language processing uh, in big data projects? Okay, uh, as you know, natural language processing is focused uh, on enabling computers to understand and process human languages. And also, you know that computers are great at working uh, with structured data, like a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet, CSV file, a database file, or a database or a CSV file. However, much information we write or speak is unstructured. This is unstructured data. Text or speak is uh, a kind of unstructured data. We can implement many NLP techniques uh, with just a few line of codes, uh, uh, line of codes of Python. And thanks to open source libraries uh, such as Spacey, NLTK, TextBlob, and the Hugging Phase, a lot, a lot of packages are very supportive and very helpful to do any NLP uh, project and any NLP uh, technique and tasks. Uh, uh, we can mention some of NLP techniques and tasks. You can see uh, for NLP and data preparation and dealing with text data, you can do stemming, immortalization. Uh, to represent your words in numbers, you can do something like bag of words, word to vect, all of that. You can use something called the term frequency, TFIDF, uh, term frequency, inverse document frequency, term frequency, inverse document frequency. TFIDF, you can use Word the Cloud to do some visualization to the most common words in your uh, text. Uh, you can do sentiment analysis to understand uh, whether this uh, comment or whether this review is positive or negative. You can use named entity recognition, for example, if you have an unstructured text and you want to understand uh, where is the organization, where is the paper, people name, and all of that. This is called uh, uh, named entity uh, recognition. Uh, I think, and that's it for answering the, this question. Uh, and now we can say that this is our, uh, this was our today's uh, session. I hope I was able to answer uh, all your questions. Uh, if you have any questions, do write to us at contact at uh, ed, ed -uh -watch org. Uh, and also don't forget to check out uh, our training programs on advanced analytics, uh, automation and Python and other digital transformation topics. That's it for today. Thank you for listening and uh, see you.